Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and video show which brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, and experience from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you won't miss a new episode. I'm your host, Fritz Bussemaker, and today I'm delighted and privileged to have a conversation with Maarten Butterman. Maarten, welcome to the program. Thanks, Fritz. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Allow me to introduce Marta to our audience. Uh, you call yourself a global future internet expert. And I think you can right, rightfully make that cre- uh, claim because you're also a board member of the ICANN, even a past chairman. Uh, you, uh, for a period of time, led uh, run the, the .org registry. Uh, you were the director of information society at the RAND Corporation, had similar jobs with the European Commission and the Dutch government. And you currently run your own company, the Global Networked Knowledge Society. Now, and that resulted in numerous um, uh, moderator and speaking engagement. And you've authored and co-authored well over 50 peer-reviewed studies. So I would say well-versed on, on the internet. And that's going to be, I think, the main topic. Again, good. thank you for uh, joining us. Now, I just mentioned a couple of, I would say, your current brands uh, associated with you. What would you qualify as your dominant brand or the, the brand you realize you normally present yourself with? I guess it's the the very much related to the recognition that we share one world and that from that, that we need to make sure that we preserve this world and carry it on to the generations uh, after us. I've got four children myself, uh, but there's many more children in the world, and and this is essential. And I believe that the internet uh, can make a big a big contribution to that. And uh, so I see that as the corner where I can do my little contribution to uh, to to progressing this. Okay. Hey, that was an unexpected answer, to be honest. And uh, but very pleased you presented it in that way immediately going into why the internet is so relevant and important because my assumption was, okay, I'm a board member of the ICANN or I'm an independent strategic advisor. Uh, but uh, I like the fact that you immediately are presenting your, connecting your brand to the future generations. It's it's uh, the basis for all what I do. I, I am on the board of the ICANN uh, uh, company. And, and, and basically, ICANN, who takes care of the global internet uh, addressing system, uh, has a very unique and important position in that. Yeah. But it's very limited. It's limited to addressing, to making sure that we get connected to, we want to be connected yeah. with, the information we want to be connected with, limited. And it should be limited because that's the only way to ensure that ICANN can do that work. Yeah. Uh, and I've been uh, on that board for several years and been sharing it even for, for three years during the COVID period uh, with much uh, conviction. Yeah. And it's just a part of the picture of sustainable sustainability. Yeah. And maybe c- can you expand a little bit um, describing what ICANN is? Because most people know the Internet exists, the World Wide Web exists, and ICANN plays a very key role there what is that role yeah, well basically every time when you go on the internet you make a connection with someone or something or some data some information every time you do that you hit ICANN because ICANN takes care of a unique addressing system that is stable secure and has been functioning for for decades now uh, it, it has not been down so we are able to do that well uh, ICANN is also not uh, a government organization. Uh, it, it's, it's truly uh, a corporation that is based on what we call multi-stakeholdership. Uh, so multiple stakeholders who all have an interest in that the in- internet functions in terms of addressing and will help make that happen, come together in ICANN and together determine the policies that has made this what uh, as stable and 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 effective as it is today okay so without ICANN there is no internet is that a fair claim or not uh, uh it wouldn't work like that but ICANN has a very central role if ICANN would be poof disappear it will take some time before you realize that well maybe we need to organize something centrally 
to make sure that the whole world continues to communicate. Uh, the internet is a combination of internets, of hundreds of internets. And these are connected via that one route that is unique and that uh, resolves everything. Okay. So that is what uh, ICANN is looking after. You just mentioned it's an organization. Uh, I still would assume that that organization is has a, an HQ somewhere in this world. And where would that be? Yes, that, that is true. It's it's uh, set up as a, what they call a 501c3, uh, according to the U.S. tax code, in California. So uh, it's a, what one would call a foundation. So all the money is there uh, to do to serve the purpose, all the money that comes in. It's not to be given out to the shareholders. It's not to be given out to those who invest in it. It's, it's really there to perform the function. And it's also protected by that uh, in a way uh, that uh, uh, it's not abused by me or future generations of, of, of uh, uh, directors. Okay, now one can argue that the internet um, as we know it is an American in, uh, innovation invention. Started off in DARPA, if DARPA, if I'm uh, correctly, uh, with people like Finn Surf, one of the most well-known people uh, who was responsible for creating that. Um, the fact that it has that origin, that it's still uh, based out of California, although it has a global uh, uh, presence, uh, to what extent is there then still this assumption of having an American, an American bias? And how do you have to deal with that uh, uh, when you are, are the board? Uh, how does that uh, play out? Well, the board is very international uh, by definition, and, and it's truly a global board, uh, whereas it is set up in, in the U.S. originally. And up to uh, the end of the last millennium, actually, most of the Internet users used to work and live in the, in the north of uh, America. Nowadays, it's less than 10%. And the rest of the world okay. is, is doing that. Also on the board, uh, we have uh, all regions of the world represented with a maximum of five from the 20 people from from the North American region. And, and uh, you, you see that today, that it's really also conscious in the decisions we make. It's all very transparent that we do take into account the global picture and, and not... Uh, uh, the American one or, or American yeah. uh, 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 policy, uh, except for the fact that it's also a part of this world that we share. Okay. Now, uh, we, we've seen some recent uh, conflicts in the world, uh, unfortunately. Um, to what extent do those conflicts have an impact on uh, the functioning of the ICANN? How do you what does that does it impact you and then how if yes well in some ways it does in other ways it doesn't uh, because for ICANN uh, we are not up to tell any government what to do or what not to do that's not our function our function is to make sure that the internet is available and that you can resolve the internet wherever you are uh, of course conflicts lead to a kind of fragmentation of the world but that's not on the level of the addressing system itself, which we are responsible for. It's more on the level of data. You see data policies where uh, data cannot leave specific geographic regions, or you see indeed warfare. You see also countries where uh, citizens don't get access to the internet during periods, shutdowns, as they say, uh, all not uh, something we do. Uh, but uh, also something that doesn't really affect us in our global function, although it does touch the people on the ground, of course. Yes, but, but I, can, I can imagine that if a government decides to shut off the internet or this uh, would ask, okay, plan, can you please shut off their internet? Uh, then doesn't actually matter which answer you're going to give because you're declining the request. Uh, you immediately are going to be part of that discussion, or is that uh, too simplistic? I, I think what helps is if you're very clear to what we do and why we do it. And uh, with 
the, the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. What we did see is a request from the Ukraine to, to, to take .ru out of the route. This has been public uh, and uh, it didn't take us a lot of time to recognize that, yes, uh, whatever this war going on is, it will not justify uh, for us to take something out of the route. Uh, uh, so uh, we argued that decision very well. You can see it on the ICANN website. And this has been globally accepted. Uh, and, and it has been uh, both by the internet communities as by most nation states. Okay, good. Uh, now, uh, now I understand that uh, question. Now, I was wondering, I just shared the highlights of your career leading up to being on the board of ICANN. I was wondering what uh, background, what ex previous experience was most useful for you in uh, becoming a ICANN board member? I... It's 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 interesting because my career started uh, with the implementation of office automation in the Dutch government department in the, at the end of the eighties when that wasn't normal yet to share files to share applications to use office applications uh, websites didn't even uh, exist at that time not in the term of the World Wide Web uh, and uh, when we did that i got the opportunity to also implement telework which brought it another step further that mm -hmm. it's really uh, something you can do wherever you are connect uh, at that time we needed to set up bulletin board systems to make sure the people in the office and those at other places could talk but that already inspired me to focus on that the real thing to do was really work together no matter where you are at the best place where you can be to get things done. And uh, it already started there. Uh, an understanding why the internet is so important and why it needs to be global. And being at the European Commission, uh, where I was part a scientific officer for the communication and uh, IT research programs, uh, it, it was only, only more uh, clear already also how this internet and IT fast connections, telecoms, uh, helps to unite Europe and to become one economic trading nation. And that has become uh, more global after that. So my first global experience was truly with the public interest registry, uh, the registry that takes care for everything that uh, ends with .org uh, yes. in the route. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, globally recognized as a kind of uh, do good uh, or purpose uh, registry. It's also a non-profit registry and it's uh, overseen by ICE, the Information Society, ISOC, a global organization that uh, looks after internet users. There, I had truly the experience how it is to be global in something. And when in the course of time, uh, the opportunity came up to not only have .org, but also other top level domains so behind the dot instead of dot org dot ngo which is purposely only available for ngos but also the so-called idn so dot org in chinese characters or in mm -hmm. uh, saudi uh, characters uh, that made it more clear that it's also an internet that needs to continue to grow if we want not only those who master english to, to, to use it, but really to become something useful for all uh, citizens in the world, uh, either locally or globally. And uh, that helped me get a deep understanding before, well, maybe that was one of the reasons why I was be elected to the ICANN board by the community of ICANN. Got it. Yeah, and you just uh, a small segue to uh, something I quite find uh, fascinating that uh, we have so many languages in the world, um, and there are a couple of dominant languages uh, when we go online, uh, English being the dominant one. Uh, do you promote as much languages being used as possible, and how? who needs to cater for that to happen? If 
uh, you use something other than the Western alphabet? Uh, a lot needs to be done there. Um, of course, all these different languages, etc., don't help if you want to talk with somebody in the same language. Uh, so for global communications, what originally was the start of the internet, it was good to have a few languages and 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 uh, the, the early translations were between a limited number of languages. Now, the internet is not only for across borders anymore, but also for within communities. Uh, and in particularly in India, where there is a lot of poverty, uh, the, the Indian government sees uh, going digital, digital India, as an essential part of their program to relieve the poverty, to allow people, to give people opportunities to participate. Well, many of those don't master English, but uh, have one of different, uh, eight different scripts that are in use in, in India and 24 main languages and even more uh, derivatives of languages, as I understand. I'm not an expert on those details, but I do know that in particular there, having uh, Diwali available for the Diwali community allows them to organize themselves in, for instance, making fabrics that then together can be used in, in clothes that then can be sold on the global market and, and, and provide income uh, and things like that locally. Uh, and uh, organizing society locally uh, these kind of applications become so much more uh, possible if you can do it in your own language. Now, we're working very much on that, and that is throughout the world. Uh, and more needs to be done to make sure that it all works well, because the internet originally was based on the Latin character set and with a limited number of characters. So uh, we need to make sure this works to make sure that the whole world can benefit from the internet to the fullest extent, and not only the five and a half billion that already benefit from it today. Okay, and this is something, uh, I would say the, the current, uh, is there a, a sentiment, let's go for an ex ex inclusive approach as possible? So is it applauded that we expanded it in Atlanta, or do you see no, uh, it, this is going to be too confusing for everybody, and there's a little bit of a pushback. What's the sent the the sentiment? It's 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 clearly it's a big market, but it's a slow market, and a lot needs to be done, which means it really needs to be a combination of uh, actors that together make it happen. Uh, the technical implementation doesn't have to be very expensive, uh, but it does take costs and effort, uh, and the business case may not be there because you talk about those who are not on the internet yet. So yeah. that is the business you don't know yet. Uh, on the other hand, for, for governments, like in particular the Indian government, it's very clear why it's so important to introduce it in society. Uh, and uh, we had a, a global uh, universal acceptance day a month ago in the world. Uh, there were also sessions in the Netherlands and in Germany. And there the emphasis was also on the open societies as the Netherlands and Germany are, how do we deal with people who come from other scripts, other uh, nations, but work with us or even come and live in our country? Uh, a clear example of what was given is, for instance, uh, Michael Gorbachev. If you write it in Russian, it's only one name. If you trans uh, see in how many different languages it's translated, if you put it in a different language, in the official papers, it doesn't read the same. So it's it's a clear, the, you need to get the unique uh, uh, identity somewhere uh, codified as well. So even in our countries, it's important and it becomes more and more doable because also translation systems become more and more intelligent and better able to, to serve us in crossing, uh, talking across languages as long as we have the unique identifiers. Okay, uh, Marta, I'm gonna move on because uh, what I, an interesting question, a question which pops up in my mind, you, you describe a very global multi-stakeholder uh, community you have to deal with. Um, what are the, let's say the personal traits you need to have to be able to survive in such an environment? For me, it's very much the, the recognition, well, first, 
uh, and I guess one of the first things I learned in life is that control is an illusion. And I see that confirmed time and time again, because you cannot control everything. And certainly not if you work on a global level. Uh, the other thing is, uh, who are we to say that our way of thinking is better? Our ethics is better. Our norms are better or more important than those of other parts of the world. So you need to be able to go beyond that with an open mind and truly listen to what others have to bring in and, and have to, to say. This is also why the emphasis in, 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 for instance, a global institution as ICANN is on transparency. So real transparency, being able to understand what's happening. So nothing hidden and real accountability for those actors who can carry that uh, accountability uh, rather than you should do it in this way or you should do it in that way. That is something that uh, it's not up to us to, to, to arrange, but we can make sure that we come together in a very transparent and accountable way so the world knows what we're doing. Okay, so if you want to survive in such a global multi-stakeholder community, uh, don't be a control freak and listen. That's what I'm hearing you say. Open mind. With open, open mind. mind. Uh, listening is not enough. Yeah. You also okay. need to do so with Good open point. mind. Yeah. <laughs> now, in that respect, um, how would you qualify success? What the, what does success mean for you in this case? Um, I guess in the essence, it's making progress. Because mm -hmm. how much progress you make, you cannot, you cannot determine beforehand. Uh, because that will be control again. But successful is where you see that uh, you manage to come together with stakeholders, with minds, uh, and people who believe that, okay, now we found the right, the right direction and we do steps, we're able to set steps in that direction. Then we have success. Uh, for me, success is not uh, winning, uh, knocking uh, the opponent out. For me, success is moving forward together. And uh, I think that resonates or that comes back to your own uh, company, Global Networked Knowledge Society. It is about the, the real, realization we all come together and we need each other. Is that, uh, am I right to uh, make that assumption? I, I would say so. And, and, and just to avoid that people think uh, uh, GNKS Consult is a very big organization. I don't have employees. I work with other top people that uh, are very good in their trade. But uh, we all believe in the fact that this world that we're living in and that is developing is global, the yeah. G, uh, is networked. Uh, we do things together. It's based on knowledge, uh, data exchange, data use, uh, learning from each other, learning from mistakes. For almost every problem, there is already a solution somewhere in the world. Just need to find it. Mm. And that's about society. It's about people. In that understanding, I've been engaging with uh, different people in many, many different projects, studies for governments, for other organizations, to help them determine how to move forward best. Got it. So thank you for that. Um, and I was wondering, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future of the Internet? Um. I'm optimistic, but that's also in my nature. Uh, yes. But the reason for the optimism is that uh, a well-functioning internet is so important for so many. So even if the internet can go dark in certain countries at times, I believe overall that the push will be for this internet to function and to serve the world as this uh, independent communication medium in a way like the oceans do. We cannot only pollute our part of the ocean and, and then, uh, or only keep our part of the oceans clean. Maybe that's a better example. Uh, but I, I believe, I'm optimistic because I do believe there's so many people who are dependent on it and who see the good use uh, ability of it. Got it. Now, in the work you do at, at the moment, um... Do you have anything which you go to to inspire you or do you have role models? What's the uh, the way you motivate yourself? Uh, well, 
my inspiration comes from the people around me. Uh, that's where it starts, right? Uh, you, you see your daughters. I see my daughters, my, their families grow up. I see the people around me who are uh, uh, affected by what happens in the world, who have dreams, who have things. And, and, and you want that to be possible for them to find a way forward in a world that continues to 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 serve them, to be one where they want to live in. That's where it starts. Uh, I also, particularly in this global environment related to the internet, uh, money is important. And there's people who are out there to make money. But there are so many people here who work with passion. And from that passion, uh, really uh, are willing to do the right thing and, and are committed to that. And that is a pleasure and an honor. Uh, people like uh, uh, that that helped build the internet. Uh, I, I, I won't mention them all, but for instance, Vince Cerf is one of those people who's made such a difference in helping to make this happen. And even today, if you meet him, he's beyond 80 now, I think, but he is still so basic and so simple and so straightforward about this is what it's about keep it simple yeah. and 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 it's just here to serve us yeah uh, uh, so that that is so that is so inspiring and i i'd love to uh do my little bit yeah. uh, to add to that uh martin uh, a, cu a couple of last couple of questions before we have to go unfortunately um how does it feel to be part of an industry where you can still meet and work like yourself with the inventors of that industry? You just mentioned Vince Earth, he still lives. Uh, almost any other industry I'm aware of, you don't have that possibility. It's it's uh, an honor and it's, it's also... Um... One of the things that is key is, uh, as you know, we're Dutch. Uh, we had the commemoration of war victims a couple of days ago. And what uh, really touched me was on TV, what you see people that were still there in the war, were there in the picture, but it was not them talking. It was their grandchildren talking. Uh, what you see is it's passed on by generations. And this is so key. And now we can still benefit from these generations to to, to tell us, oh, oh, you think too much, or, uh, oh, it's much simpler than you do, or uh, keep it straight. So it's benefiting from this opportunity and uh, use them as role models for me to become a role model for my children and, and next generations and, and to pass on the baton and, and, and keep it focused on uh, doing the right thing. And in... With respect to doing the right thing, uh, can you imagine a future beyond the internet, or is it here to stay? Uh, I think the, the 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 internet is here to stay. So in that way, the future beyond the internet is when this earth may not exist anymore. Uh, but I do believe that the internet brings us so much that we will want it to be with us wherever we, we go towards the future. Okay. Looking at your own future, um, how do you want the world to remember you? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it's always difficult to write your own eulogy. Uh, but I've been trying to live my life uh as someone who cares and it would be great if that would be seen care about my family of course but also pe people in general and, and the world at large and who realized that this is one world we share so someone that contributed to it even if it was just a little bit but uh, did his thing to contribute well Martha, uh, I want to thank you so much. Uh, you are still on the board of ICANN, so that small contribution is actually a little bit bigger than for most people because because of the internet, we can have this talk online. And um, I want to thank you for having the, this talk, sharing your insights, how you got there, uh, what it means to be a board member of ICANN, and uh, yeah, your prediction of where it's going to go to. So thank you so much.
Okay, thank you for the interview and a pleasure to meeting you here. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.